Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. So today I'm going to um, solve and review this wooden ball puzzle. Uh, I bought it as part of the True Genius line, which I think um, is most commonly found at Barnes and Noble. Um, <clears throat> and they have the kind of a nice, um, I don't know what, how to say it. They have like this little a story to tie together all these different puzzles. They they tie these puzzles to ancient cultures like the Egyptians and the Chinese or whatnot. And um, they sort of use that theme to bookmark the puzzles. And so a lot of times they sell these boxes where there's two puzzles for like $14, $15. And then um, they ask you to solve it and they tell a little story contextualizing the puzzle. So I bought this as part of um, a little box called the shot put and the javelin and uh, there they wanted to tie the puzzle with sort of the Greeks you know the Olympic, Olympic Games for instance so uh, the javelin is a, a metal uh, disassembly puzzle which frankly uh, is a little bit trivial um, I'll probably you know, put a little tiny uh, video of that up uh, later on um, and the shot put here uh, is a bit more interesting in my opinion so uh, this is a wooden ball they call it the shot put, at least for the True Genius line. And um, the idea behind these are all very similar, whether it's a wooden compass, which I will make a video on later, or like a, a cask or a barrel. Uh, the idea is there's all these you know, interlocking pieces and you're, you're supposed to take them apart and then um, put it back together again. Now. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of these uh, types of puzzles. Um, I bought a whole bunch of them initially when I was investigating the, again, the True Genius line, when I just started kind of getting interested in fiddling with these puzzles um, before I began to you know, get the Hanayamas more exclusively, because those are a lot more interesting in my opinion. Uh, but the difference between um, this type of puzzle and the Hanayamas uh, one is obviously this is made out of like you know wood where the hanayamas are almost always uh, out of metal which is in my opinion nicer but the difference is that the hanayama you know the the challenge of disassembling a hanayama is oftentimes uh, harder than assembling or just as hard as assembling whereas for these wooden ball puzzles or these um you know 3d puzzles disassembling is actually reasonably you know easy it's very easy to just basically smash it apart and then the assembling becomes pretty difficult. Uh, I don't think that this puzzle is trivial if you um, don't know how to do it. But the key, of course, is uh, you have a huge advantage if you just sort of slowly take your time taking it apart. So you know, you know that very quickly you realize just from some basic exploration that um, pushing on one end is going to free up this piece. And then when you uh, take this out, uh, you can see that this is made out of two pieces right here. And then you see that this piece falls in, okay? Um, and you know that of course can then slide out uh, in a particular fashion, or maybe it can't, and then you kind of Turn it back over here. So you can sort of fiddle with it. And if you just very carefully memorize how you take it apart and you pay attention, um, then solving it doesn't is not too crazy, not too difficult, right? Um, and so I feel like you know the the challenge of it is not very high if you want to walk in it being prepared. Now you could of course just completely scramble like a Rubik's Cube and then try to put it together from scratch. And that is actually uh, quite challenging. But there are, you know, but of course, this is a way to, to beat that if you don't want to do that, all right? So for now, uh, let's definitely um, take our time and uh, uh, take it apart. So the orientation is also important. You have to sort of decide how you want to go about all of this. Um, here we go. So, take our time here, take this apart, and everything just sort of falls apart, here, okay? All right, so the first thing to uh, sort of take a look at is that we do have 
um, these big pieces. This is the semicircle piece, okay? And you have to sort of rebuild it into the, the globe. So we're gonna put that aside for now. Let's analyze some of the pieces. So we have these guys, so it's important to pay attention to that. We have two of these pieces. You can see that this is needs to be on the outside. But you see that these two pieces are identical. And then you have another piece here that is asymmetrical. See, these two are the same. And over here, this is a little bit larger. So it's important to pay attention to that. Let's put that aside. We have a piece here, which is also unique, but you should have paid attention to the fact that when you first take it apart, you know that these two pieces fit here. You know that this is the last move to make the globe uh, come together. So you should put that aside because you know that this is gonna be the last part, okay? You have these two very complicated pieces that seem to actually match together, just like so. So that's a pair, that's important to know. And then you have these guys right over here, that's also the same as well, okay? And it's important to make a distinction between this and this, okay? So notice how this piece here of a certain thickness and then this piece here is missing the bottom half of the top half. It only, ha only has half of it, right? So here's the whole thing, here's half, and you can see that this is also identical. It's missing half, right? So hopefully you can see the difference. Right here. Sorry for that interruption. Um, my daughter was calling for me. So it's kind of hard to make these videos, of course, uh, too early in the night. There's a lot of noise and ambient noise. Hopefully you can still hear me uh, over all of that. So anyways, uh, getting back to the issue at hand, I was talking about um, how these look identical on the outside, but you can see that one of them is a little bit thicker, right? So understand that these two, the thin ones, we're gonna be using near the end of the build. I'm gonna put that aside. And then these two, of course, are identical, okay? And we're gonna be using that in the beginning. So if you understand the groupings um, of these, uh, pieces, then you are going to begin to have some uh, success tr sort of tinkering and figuring things out, okay? So you can tell by the half circles here that there's only so many things you can do. I mean, obviously, there's a groove here that you have to put one of these guys on. And you know that here, it's not appropriate because you know that uh, this piece is at the very, very end of the build, right? Uh, and you know that this is unlikely to be the piece because, of course, uh, it's asymmetrical. So the thing that makes the most sense is to put this right in place. It seems like that is um, the way it's gonna go. And since we have two of them, it would make sense that you have two of these, and so one goes in each uh, position, right? So this is a good start uh, for us. Now, once you have that, if you were paying attention when you were putting, pulling things apart, you will see that this is a very nice opportunity to put it just like so. And that, of course, is gonna already begin to give you the outside skin, right? So I think hopefully that's intuitive. Now, of course, you could have chosen this instead. Uh, you could put this here, but uh, hopefully you remember that this is one of the pieces that's attached to that. And so it's very unlikely then that you would have one single one that's a narrow, um, that's a narrow file here, and then um, you know one that's thick. It makes more sense to have both symmetrically put. So this is probably again reserved for a piece near the end. So we put all that there, and then of course we take this, and uh, you can either do a piecemeal or all together. Um, I can show you either way, and then you put it like this, so. Okay. All right. It's kind of tricky doing it on the camera instead of. Uh, Instead of, of course, uh, in real time, the camera does play tricks on you. Okay, so it doesn't want to cooperate. And you'll see that uh, it slides a lot because it's not locked in yet, right? So it does slide a lot. So that's fine, we'll do it the hard way. We'll go like that. Okay, so here you go. Let's put in here and then we're going to put that over there. Okay, so now we have the ball. I'm going to rotate this slowly. It's gonna to wanna to roll on you now because it is a ball. Okay, so you've built it up like almost a sandwich, right? From the bottom up. So 
Now you want to find a way to lock this in position so it doesn't uh, essentially fall apart. And wow, look at this thing, it really is rolling. And so the pr pretty obvious one to use, you can't really use any of these guys. It just doesn't make any sense to put it together, right? And you know, as you know, two of them is, um, is gonna be the last part. So it can't be those two pieces. If you went to all the trouble of putting this together, then you'll know that the most likely way of locking them apart is by using these two pieces like so. Okay, so at this point, I am going to uh, take some time to talk about this. You can lock it either like this, or you can lock it like that. It is gonna, it's gonna require some trial and error. Uh, when you put it in, you can put it in again. Hopefully you can see we can either do it with the little tiny wedge up or the wedge down, all right? Um, ultimately, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna choose to do it with a wedge down. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Here the wedge is gonna be down. We're gonna do that. And then we will use that to lock things together, okay? So here it goes. Hopefully that worked out. So if you lock it in, um, then what will happen is, you see how we have the lower piece here? If you do that, then things will fall. And this will actually fall here, okay? Uh, and that's a consequence again of putting this thing here. Then the top part will fall right down everything just goes. You can also push it back up, of course, right? Okay, if you do it the other way, then of course you can turn it around, it will fall this way. Um, but you want to do it this way so that you have this scenario here. So when you take the two things, these two pieces, and you lock it together so that it doesn't move, understand that it's gonna slide. You want it to slide quite a bit. This is how much you'll be sliding out, okay? Now, once that happens, you really are home free because there's not any pieces left. Again, you should have memorized that these two don't come into play until the very last part, right? That's the last one. So you only have two pieces to experiment with, and there really, frankly, is only uh, you know, so many ways you can put it in there. So you take this, the short end slides in first, and if that happens, go to the other end, you'll see that there is just enough space here slot this piece in like so. Uh, notice again that if you had the larger piece, you wouldn't be able to squeeze it in, so it all sort of fits, right? So that goes in like that, and we recreate this shell here, and then you essentially push everything up. If you push everything up, uh, all you have is this piece here that's depressed. You need to actually move it out, so if you just rotate it, you can just push it out. So now you have the skin here, and lo and behold, you have created a hole that perfectly allows you to put the last piece right over here, and it slots right in here, and now you have recreated the ball. Um, hopefully you found that to be somewhat useful. Uh, what I will do is I will now take it apart and put it back together again, and hopefully you can see again how I did it. So here we go. As you can see, disassembling this is actually not much of a challenge at all. You just keep fiddling with it, and eventually it will all just fall apart. Okay? All right, so here we go. By the way, I'd like to take this opportunity again to show you that if you take these two pieces, it should be the same level that you put it together to stabilize what you built. It'll come together looking kind of like this, All right? So this is if you put it at the top like so, okay? Hopefully you can see it from the side view like that, and in reality, you should be putting it at the bottom like this. If you put it at the bottom, that orientation will give you a ledge which will allow this, the center part to fall and rest on this ledge. 
and that's pretty important. You want this ledge, you want the top um, like half circle piece to drop and rest on this ledge, you see? And so if you did it the other way, like so, you don't have the ledge, right? Now this is symmetrical, so I can turn it around. So if you, if you put it like this, you don't want it to sit here, okay? You want it to have this little depression here for it to fall down, okay? So hopefully you can appreciate that. We'll put that aside. So how are we gonna put it together? Here we go. Take this. We don't want this, right? This is the uh, asymmetric one. So put it aside. Okay, so here we go. Like that. Ah, this is too thin. We don't want that. We know these two come at the very end. So this is perfect. As you can see, we'll put the one piece up here. Here's its matching piece. We'll put it down here. And then we have the um, other one. Notice that the ends are the same. We will put that here. And again, notice that even though you're putting it together, these pieces are freely movable. And this thing can slide down. This thing can go up, so it's not locked in, right? The center is where you're gonna put the other pieces. And then of course here, you can see the vertical groove, and then you basically put that right over here. So that's where you're at. But understand, in this position, you can still move this in and out, right? This is not locked in. So you, you need to do something in the middle to sort of begin to recreate this edge. So this is where this comes in, so again, you want to put it down below. So slide this here, that's half of it. And then make sure that this little groove matches up, this little peg matches up. You want to have it face downward and this goes in. So now this recreates the center. And I, as I said, if you do that and then you just rotate it, everything should fall. And here you go, this falls. Now this doesn't fall all the way out because this guy is there to prevent that. But you see this little ledge here? See the ledge? And this is where the top semicircle drops and rests comfortably right here. This will eventually be moved up uh, to create, if you move it all the way up like this, you'll eventually move it up and then that will create the hole to put the very last piece. But in the meantime, it should sit just like so, okay? So at that point, you can take the asymmetric. Remember the small piece should go from my right to my left or you know, stage, stage right to stage left, whatever. From this side, the small piece goes through. And again, I mean, I know how to solve it, so of course I'm doing it, but it, you could you know, play with it. Like you, know, you can see, well, what happens if I do it this way? You, if you do it this way, you won't be able to put um, this piece in. So again, you can feel free to experiment and try to rotate and stuff like that. And you'll, and you'll quickly discover that you, know, you won't be able to proceed um, with completing the puzzle if you don't put it in a certain orientation. So again, the small, the small uh, section has to go in and slide in first from my right to my left. So here we go, right here. And as it rests here, you can see that there is a space now to put this, uh, this rounded element and you can't put it like this. It will go in. Uh, you can only put it like this with the narrow wooden part down below and it just sort of, it, it's a perfect fit to get into this gap. So the only way to put it in is in this orientation. So now you've got that going on. At that point, line everything up. Again, this can go in and out. You line everything up and then you push up. And when you push up, you have almost the entire globe essentially done. The only uh, thing left is, uh, to put everything together, right? So this thing is obviously out of position, but luckily, uh, if you rotate again, you can cause it to drop. And, and you, you, know, you can do it to the side or you can rotate, but you know that this piece is down here, you need to bring it back up. So it's flush here, right? And now you see there's a perfect square peg here. There is a square peg here and the rest is trivial. You only have two pieces to put in, so obviously this is the square that goes down. So we'll put it in, and obviously you need this to be finished and look 
it perfectly fits this right here. So let's put that in here and it slots right in. And here we have, again, the shot put back in one piece. Uh, so I've done this twice. Uh, hopefully from the different angles, this gives you the help you need to uh, recreate it. It's not a terribly complicated puzzle, but it can be very difficult if you've never done it before or you're not used to these type of puzzles. And on top of that, um, you weren't paying attention where you're just basically you know, removing it. But paying close attention as you disassemble will make reassembling, reassembling pretty trivial. Um, and if you use logic and sort of group things um, to the side and they just begin to sort of, you know, uh, methodically begin to try different combinations and think about how you can put the ball back together, um, you should be able to eventually get it done. So this is it, the True Genius Shot Put, um, and I will see you next time. Until then, do take care.